no can do, love. I have to paint the man cave. Husqvarna Auto Mower. Never mow again. Learn more at husqvarna.ie. Tom Watson, you're welcome to Golf Weekly. Hey, this is going to be fun. Very happy to say you're being captain and, of course, three-time major winner, Padraig Carrington, joins us. Today's special guest on Golf Weekly is Lee Westwood. Thank, thanks very much. Yeah, I'm honoured and delighted. Let's bring in Paul McGinley, who joins us now. Paul, you're very welcome. Shane Lowry, how are you keeping? I'm good, thanks, yeah. Well, I'm as good <laughs> as I can be. The biggest names in golf and Ireland's best golf podcast, Golf Weekly, now exclusively available on Patreon. Go to otbsports.com forward slash golf weekly to sign up now. Ooh, nobody likes arriving home to a chilly house. Make sure you're always cosy when you smarten up your home with Borgosh Energy. Get a free Hive Active heating control and a free Amazon Echo Dot, giving you better control of your heating. Plus, you'll get 25% off electricity and gas. Search Borgosh Energy Bundle. EAB 1,511 euro. 12 month discount on standard unit rates with direct debit and paperless billing. 24 month contract with early exit fee 50 euro. Unit rate standing charge apply. Price is valid today and may vary. See BoardGoshEnergy.ie for EAB and full T's and C's. This March, we reflect how COVID has changed death and bereavement in Ireland. Together, we grieve. Irish Hospice Foundation Bereavement Support Line is open for all of us who are grieving. Free phone 1800 80 70 77 to talk to someone in confidence and for a shoulder to lean on. Football on Off The Ball. With Paddy Power. Champions League nights on Off The Ball. Bigger than Zlatan's ego. Gamble responsibly. Gamblingcare.ie now you're very welcome back. Uh, Chelsea are 2 0 up on Everton, so they are seven points ahead of Liverpool. Same number of games played. Chelsea in fourth spot. Ten games left this season. Mark Lawrenson is with us. Evening. Hi, Joe. So, I mean, this is quite extraordinary. A six defeat in a row, eight defeats in their last 12 games. Previous to that, it was eight defeats in their previous 121 league games. No goals in eight of the 12 games. They were pretty insipid yesterday. Hmm. They were. Didn't really ever look like scoring. Um, well done to Fulham. Fulham played extremely well. I think since uh, since Burnley came and, and, and beat Liverpool, I think now all the away teams that are coming to Anfield are going and thinking, you know what, we've got a chance of winning. Whereas in the past, they just kind of come and thought, just circle the wagons. If we get away with two or three nil, we'll have, we'll have done okay. But I don't know. You look, you listen to Clark. You look at the players. They all just seem dead behind the eyes. It's, it's as though they've kind of completely run out of fuel, completely run out of ideas. And they just obviously, quite obviously, they don't look anything like the team, of course, that won the league last year. Klopp's demeanour in particular, very different from the uh, slightly argumentative Klopp we saw earlier on in the season. He, he looks as mm. beaten as anybody, which is uh, kind of stark. Yeah, and I mean... Um, I mean, you, ne you never know what goes on between between the ears of people, certainly, you know, footballers and, and managers, etc. Um, I would suggest to you, Joe, he's probably not grieved over his mother. Um, I think that certainly will be one of the problems that he's currently having. He couldn't go to the funeral, I think, as, as everybody realised. Um, and then put that in comparison to football, does it mean anything? Well, probably means absolutely little at the moment. And I think he's just kind of, it's a bit like we say, you know, um, managers have to, have to kind of um, control what happens upstairs if possible with the owners. They obviously then have to control the, the players. But who actually controls the manager and, and who actually helps the manager? Who helps the manager out of a, a, a pretty poor spell? Things like that. So, look, I could go on for hours about it, but just not playing well, just don't look like they're on it. They actually look like the three years where they've been brilliant, the front three look like they're absolutely knackered, the mm. three of them. They really seriously do. You see a little burst, you kind of go, oh, hold on a minute. Yesterday with Salah, a couple of little bursts, but generally, and, and given the fact of the amount of centre-back pairings they've had as well, which also helps the opposition when they come to Anfield, I don't suppose it's a real surprise. Have you ever had a not just a run like this, but a collapse like this from such a height? Um, yeah, but it's, it was different. Our collapse was the last game one season when we'd already won the league. I don't think we won a match after that, but they were obviously, we were partying like mad. Um, so,
So, no, the only other thing was my, my very first season at Liverpool, 81-82, on Boxing Day, we were beaten at home by Manchester City. I'm pretty sure we were 13th in the league. The boys had won the European Cup uh, in Paris and Madrid some six months earlier. Uh, everybody, all the newspapers, as you can imagine, we didn't have Sky and things like that, but all the newspapers, press, etc., saying they've gone. They've signed these new players. They're no good. They're not not, not this and not that. Uh, we had a very quick team meeting after the 3-1 home defeat by Manchester City. I think Bruce didn't have his best of days, if I remember. Um, Joe Fagan came in and literally peeled the paint off the wall with us. Um, we won the league. Um, I think we went, I don't know, 20 games, something and ended up winning the league. So that's the only one I can kind of sort of relate it to, but it's obviously in reverse. Mm. We had a text in, and the texter wasn't suggesting Klopp had lost the dressing room. Uh, quite the mm. opposite. He was, he was just making the point, if it was almost any other manager, we'd all be reaching the conclusion that somehow the manager had lost the dressing room. You know, it's yeah. just one of those go-to things. It doesn't seem to be the case uh, with Klopp, because, you know, they're all so enamoured with him and he's so charismatic and everything else. But... What do you make when you see, for instance, you know, the Salah stuff, the shaking of the head when he substituted his agent uh, tweeting just a, a full stop, you know, well, uh, all, all that stuff going on, which follows on from what he was saying in the Spanish press not so long ago. There is, there is something also not right there in terms of the buy-in amongst everybody in the dressing room. Well, I think, I think, I think Salah's a sucker which, you know, you're going to get with 20 odd p different people in the dressing room, you're going to get different characteristics and characters. And I, I think he just did because he thinks he should play every minute of every game. I don't have a real problem with that. I think his agent's been a bit of a prat. Do you know what I mean? He's an agent. He's not, he's not a player. He's not a manager. Um, he should basically keep his mouth shut or in terms of Twitter, just forget about it if he's got an itchy finger. Um, but I think with Salah, we've always kind of thought, or I've always kind of thought, that this will not be, <clears throat> excuse me, his last destination. I think he wants to go to a Paris Saint-Germain, to a Madrid, um, to a Barcelona. I don't think there's any doubt about that whatsoever. Um, and I'm pretty sure probably the football club and the manager will, will know that. Mm. Um, but he's the only one of many in the dressing room. <clears throat> and they've got a fabulous dressing room. It's, it's basically run by Van Dyke, Henderson and Milner. And nobody gets away with anything. So I wouldn't be too worried with all that kind of stuff. Um, as you rightly say, the, the manager is <clears throat> such an engaging personality anyway. And the, nearly all these players, Joe, and, it, you know, when you've got nearly all your players in the dressing room, so you've basically bought them and you've placed your faith in them, there's, there's definitely an even better vibe when that happens. Mm. And well, look, to be fair to Salah as well, he's their top scorer. He has scored 17 yeah. goals, so he's holding up some part of the bargain. In some respects, the worry for Liverpool is not that the club would uh, part ways with Klopp. He has just has too sure. much credit in the bank. I don't know how long he'd have to go on like this before they'd even think about uh, pulling the trigger. A long, long time. Mm -hmm. The worry might be, you know, he's a free-thinking type. He's had a difficult year. He's, you know, hit such heights. He may well turn around and say, look, I don't want to overstay my welcome or, or sully my relationship with this club. I, I might... Sure. I might call it a day and go off and, and take a year and, and chill out and, and regroup and come again. That's almost the big fear for Liverpool fans. Yeah, I think I think that's far more uh, palpable situation than than the, getting a phone call from an American and saying it's been great, Jurgen, but no thanks. Mm. So no, I think he's I think he's he's very very well. We know he's very very strong minded, and I think if he stops enjoying it, um, that that could well happen, but. He's been through this. He's been through this before. I mean, I'm pretty sure at Dortmund, he, he and he lost loads of players, did he not? To, to, to Munich. Every time one of the Dortmund boys' contracts was up, was up he went south to Munich. So he, he dealt with all that. I just, um, I just really seriously think that you know, with the, with the difference, such a small difference between last season and, and this season, um, they didn't really get chance to enjoy winning the league. Excuse me. They didn't have enough, long enough in pre-season, like everybody else. But I think the way that he wants to play and the way that Liverpool do play with this pressing, I, I just think that they're completely shot. And the other problem is that without Fabinho, without Henderson in midfield, even just for the numbers, let alone their ability, mm. um, they can't press as, as well. That's perfectly obvious. Um, 
And there are so many different things at the moment that are conspiring to go against them. And I just reckon privately they're saying to themselves, crikey, let's get this season over and done with and let's go away. Mm. Hopefully have a holiday everywhere and then come back and, and off we go again next season. And I know people say, well, why didn't you buy X in January? Why didn't you buy Y? But it, 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 wasn't, it wasn't a time to go out spending millions on football players for many, many different reasons, as, as, as we know. Mm. And also, that w- whatever you say about Jurgen Klopp, he's never bought a player, I don't think, just for the sake of it. And he's waited for players and waited, mm. and he decided, no, some are too expensive. But, you know, some of the centre-backs, he said, no, not for me, I don't really want them. I'd rather take a chance with Quebec, uh, people like that, Ben Davis, etc. So... There ain't a great deal wrong with the club. I mean, everyone now, of course, has gone, oh, Stevens won the league with Rangers. And, you know, he's done a really good job. And in the three years he's been there, he's improved every single player, um, obviously, which has also improved the team. And they've won the league at a canter. Mind you, you know, Celtic have, have self-imploded, to be honest with you. And they've won, I mean, I think a burning are 36 points behind Rangers and their third. Mm. And everyone's going, oh, get Stephen, get Stephen, get Stephen, get Stephen to Liverpool, come on, and all that. But it's 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 very, very early for Stephen to come back to Liverpool. And as we just discussed, I think Klopp mm. will decide that by you know deciding to go if if he wants. And oh, you know, I just said to people today, people kept saying to me, oh, get get him back, and I go Frank Lampard. And they go, what do you mean? As well, Frank Lampard went to Chelsea. You know, the same same kind of thing. He's an absolute hero at Chelsea and couldn't quite do it. And you just got to be very, very careful. So um, I did a couple of radio things today and just people were saying that, you know, when will Stephen go to, to Liverpool? I said, well, he's probably got to win the league again next year as well, which, mm. you know, Celtic will come back because quite often they do. And, and I said, and maybe he needs a couple of years in the Premier League, but not at Liverpool before he eventually goes. It's funny. I did want to ask you about Jared. I, I saw you writing about him on the BBC website as well. And you, yeah. you did raise that point about Premier League experience elsewhere. Do you think, and Rangers done very well in the Europa League as well, as you know. Uh, do, yeah. do, do you think, say, look, it's so hard to predict anything in football if this uh, year has taught us anything. But say the next two, three years play out and Klopp's there for at least the next two, three years and hmm. Stephen Jared stays at Rangers. And let's say he wins the next uh, two league titles and does a three in a row. Uh, does that give him enough of a basis to make the leap to Liverpool, or do you think there is there is such a gap between whatever it is that you know Rangers are facing and Liverpool would be facing that actually pitching in somewhere mid-table Premier League would be necessary? No, I think I, I think I think if he did another two three years and he won the league in the next two three years, because you've got to you've got to imagine that Celtic are going to come back, and I think they're going to try and burst the bank for players and, and really push Rangers. And if he's still on top and he's doing extremely well in the um, Europa League and maybe even had a spell in the in, in the Champions League, then then I think he could cut out the thing of going and managing in the Premier League. And also as well, then I think, you know, um, as a manager, and I did it a couple of times, but not for too long, but you, you learn stuff every single day and... You know, you just kind of think, oh, we're playing well and we've got it and something happens and everything's a problem. And he he needs to have a spell of that. And he probably probably needs to have a spell where things aren't going for him. Because I always think it's it's a bit like life and people talk about experience. And I would always say, well, experience is when all the bad things happen to you and, and how you deal with them. Not when the good things happen, because it's simple. But it's when the bad things happen and you've got to really seriously think about a direction that you want to take and, you know, you've got to take all the players with you and, and all those kind of things. You might be fighting the owners. So I think if he has another two or three years doing extremely well up, up in Scotland, I think that would make a transition much easier. I've always found Jared quite an interesting character. More complicated, I suspect, than maybe the media profile. Like, he, he definitely had a weight on the world aspect to his... Uh, personality at times and he felt pressure you said on the yeah. BBC piece I wrote Stephen is someone who's hugely impressive when you meet him well I mean <laughs> it's kind of a strange thing to ask because we've seen countless Stephen Gerrard interactions and in, in, in the media over the last 15 years but away from cameras and doing interviews when you meet him what kind of fella is he to be in his company ah, just a good lad he's just and he's a uh, although he doesn't have to be he's a 
very respectful to, to the old players <clears throat> and, um, you know, he understands what, what they've gone through, etc. Absolutely love Kenny, like, like, like everybody, like all of us do. Uh, but he gets it. He gets it on every level. Um, and he's <clears throat> just very, very, very modest, but very, very driven. And, I mean, if you remember, he nearly went, nearly went to Chelsea, didn't he? And that's mm. where at Liverpool he was going. Mm. He'd spoken to them. I think he'd agreed absolutely everything. And in the end, um, he, he changed his mind. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I think he said to the chief exec at the time, do not ever put me in that position again. Um, so he, 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 he was going to go, and, and, and for some reason, his, he had his head turned and he didn't go. And obviously, from that point of view, um, it, was, it was a bonus for Liverpool, certainly. So he's, he's strong. Um, he, when he was doing the under... I don't know if it was the under-16s at Melwood or the under-18s. I'm not quite sure... But uh, he, was, he was really, really strict with Curtis Jones, Joe. Really strict. Right. Because Curtis Jones came in and he had a bit of arrogance about him. Nothing wrong with that because he had the ability. But Stephen would, like, take him off. As soon as he did something wrong, on the, he'd take him off. He'd sit down. He'd talk to him. And basically gave him tough love, which is not difficult to do nowadays. But, but Stephen gave that to him. And I think if you talk to Curtis Jones now, he would say that, that uh, Stephen Gerrard, as, he, as his manager of the under 18, he said he was fabulous because he could quite easily, Curtis Jones, have, have gone off the rails, gone off the track, or down the track. Right, very interesting. Uh, on Liverpool in the short term, mm. then, so let's let's see what happens with Gerrard, and it's a bit premature to get too caught up in everything. Uh, sure. Clearly, I mean, what, what, what the resting at the weekend of Alexander Arnold and Thiago and Mane suggests is that uh, Jurgen Klopp. Uh, privately has reached the conclusion the league has gone top four is very difficult let's have a rattle at the Champions League um, so uh, if, if things continue to career the way they're going you know mm -hmm. and, and the form continues do you think that that can damage next season can damage morale can destabilize things uh, further like do, does it once the break is coming over the summer is what I'm asking does it really matter what happens over the next uh, month or two no doesn't okay. No, not really. <clears throat> you, but you wouldn't want it to get any worse because you can just imagine the press every day, and you don't want to be dealing with that, mm. both as a manager and, and, and also as a player. <clears throat> no, I don't, and I think you might even be saying to them now, privately, the group of players saying, "Look, boys, you know, let, let's just get through this season. Give me everything you've got. I'm going to give you a nice rest, and then we're going to go next. Go again, obviously, the start of next season." He's probably in talks with FSG at the moment, saying that, look, you know, we're, we're going to have to change this. Um, it might cost you X. So they'll be having those conversations all the time now. Um, head of recruitment as well. They'll be, they'll be having the lists out and, and, and all those kind of things. And, but I think that's privately. I think publicly it will be, it'll still be, they'll all stay on message, which is, you know, we've got to keep going. Mm. We've got to try and get in the top four. All, 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 those, all those kind of things, certainly. How many players does he need over the summer? Dream scenario. Um, well, another centre-back, a top-class centre-back, if, if obviously he can get one. Um, I would say um, a number 10 for me. Um, I know he's got Jota and everything, but just, just, just a number 10. And Thiago sort of... He can't quite get there, can he? He looks, he looks great on some occasions. And then every time he goes to tackle, he fouls. And I'm kind of thinking, well, probably because he's, 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 he's got no pace just to get in there. So that's been a little bit of a problem. Um, and then, Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. What's the difference between a number 10 and what Firmino does in that formation? <laughs> you, you want to do him... You want a number 10, he does it on a more obvious basis. Um, not a great deal, but I, I just think Firmino is, is he a number 10? I think he's between a number 10 and another striker. Mm. That, 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 that would be my kind of take on it. Um, but also, just, just, just so you're not number 10, which is not too, too dissimilar, Joe, mm. it will push Firmino because yeah. he needs pushing. Yeah. Um, and we know, he's, we know he's the glue for that front three for the three years. He's been brilliant. Um, probably doesn't score enough goals, but, he, but he's been brilliant. But everybody, 
everybody, no matter what level you play at, needs pushing. Mm. Everybody. And, you know, we think Van Dijk might come back and play a few games towards the end of the season and, and, and hopefully regain his form, um, his fitness first. But even, even, even him, if he walked into the dressing room next July and we signed whoever from wherever, that everyone says, wow, this, this fellow's a great centre back. Even the Van Dijk will be like, hold on a minute, I might have to get a shift on. Yeah. And, and, and that basically, that's what happens with, with, with these teams. I mean, Manchester City didn't replace Vincent Company, and look what happened to them. And that was just one player. And we've been a bit like that this year, you could say, haven't we, with, with, with Van Dijk, because he's not been replaced. But mm. so, so that's the kind of thing. You, you, just, you just want that competition for places, but you want the competition for places to be top, top players. I mean, your Shakiris and your Origis of this world, will it really matter if they're not here or they are here next year? No, not really. But, you know, they come in on odd, odd occasions and do OK. But everybody knows Liverpool's best team when they're all fit, basically. And, and sometimes, you know, as good as that is, sometimes you're kind of thinking, well, hold on a minute, we, we need to change that a little bit. And the Americans generally have been really, really good with the manager. I think, you know, they rate him, they trust him, um, and they know he's not just going to spend money for the sake of it. And generally, even though, and we've spoken about this before, you and I, when we signed Van Dijk, and we all went, 75 million, mm. that's 25 too much. Mm. You get you get double that. So, you know, once also the manager's got the trust of the owners, even if they, like, raise an eyebrow if we sign someone for 95 million in, in summer, um, at least he, kinda, he turns around and goes, well, you know what, I'm going to improve this fella. If one day you need to sell him, you might get another sixty million on top of what you paid for. Mark Lawrence, always great having you on. Thanks so much. Pleasure. Cheers. Cheers. Should uh, let you know it's gone full time at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea have beaten Everton by two goals to nil. Jorginho scored a penalty, their second own goal, the first goal. So that's uh, seven points clear now, Chelsea of. Liverpool, Chelsea in fourth spot. They're uh, four points clear of Everton, five points clear of Spurs. Suddenly looking very good for fourth spot. Uh, Paddy Power is the sponsor of our football coverage here on Off the Ball. For information on responsible gambling, visit gamblingcare.ie. We'll take a short break. Football on Off the Ball with Paddy Power. Ready for your next big move? The trip from the fridge to the couch. Gamble responsibly. Gamblingcare.ie.